While AM4 turned out to be a legendary platform, some of its motherboards are probably not. It could be that most of the motherboards out there are somewhat on the budget side. It could be that most of them resemble this GAA310TM-H motherboard. If the two DIMM slots and the lack of VRM heatsinks didn't tip you off, Gigabyte targeted this MicroITX motherboard for the budget-minded PC builder. The manufacturer opted for a 3 plus 3 phase configuration for its VRMs, 3 phases for vCore and 3 for VSOC. The topology for the vCore phases is a somewhat common one high side MOSFET and two low side MOSFETs, and a plain one high side and one low side for the SOC phases. Having two MOSFETs for both high side and low side would decrease the power losses and lower the VRM temperatures, but it would also increase the bill of materials, with the expected effect on pricing. Add a lack of heatsink to the mix and this could quickly end badly, so I have two pieces of advice here. Stick to the lower power CPUs and don't throw away that bundle cooler. Also part of the budget-oriented features is the presence of only two DIMM slots. Now, there are A520 boards that do come with four, but then again, there are also boards that have two DIMM slots that have clips at just one end. So, the DIMM slots configuration gets a well-deserved meh. On the expansion slots, the MicroITX format of the board puts a hard limit on their count. Gigabyte will happily tell you that the A320M-H has two PCIe x1 and one PCIe x16. Thing is, a two slots video card will turn the neighboring PCIe x1 into a nice decoration, leaving you with just one PCIe x1 available. And since we're on the two slots video card topic, I have to admit that the placement of the SATA ports goes in the same spirit. Port 2 will most likely have its cable squashed by any two slot GPU longer than 200mm, and port 3 can be used, at best, to draw a smile on your face. This leaves only ports 0 and 1 in a usable position. The good news, however, is that the board does have an M.2 slot. Since this is a 300 series motherboard, this is going to be PCIe 3.0, which is probably fine for most use cases. In terms of pin headers, you get the usual front panel audio, a 20-pin TPM header, useful also to connect an LPC-based debug card, two USB 2 and one USB 3 connector, and of course, the front panel connector. The rear I.O. doesn't have anything really special to it. Well, maybe the two PS2 connectors, one for the keyboard, the other for the mouse. I don't think there are too many people using those. Heck, even I use USB peripherals now. APU enthusiasts can use either the HDMI output or the DVI. But the DVI connector is digital only, so if you want to hook it up to an old VGA monitor or a similarly old projector, you'll need a slightly more expensive dongle than the $1 DVI to VGA adapter. You also get four USB 3 type A ports, two USB 2, a 1GB Ethernet port, and your usual 3 jack audio. And about that audio, I was particularly disappointed by the microphone input. It may be that the other manufacturers do a better job at configuring the ALC887 codec, but in my case, the level that I got from it is really low. Have a listen. Test recording for the Gigabyte GA320M-H rear panel. Volume 100%. Preamp 0. The microphone boost can get back some of that, but at the cost of also amplifying noise. Testing rear audio for the Gigabyte A320M-H Volume 100% Preamp plus 30 decibels This one is actually And I thought that the audio solution used by HP in the Z230 workstation was bad Here's a sample recorded on the Z230 Anyway, that's all that I have for you on the R9280 Thank you for watching, I hope you liked it, and I'll see And that one was with volume at 80% and no boost enabled, or as I called it earlier, preamp at 0 dB. Moving on to the BIOS setup utility. Gigabyte provided updates until September 2nd, 2024 with the latest version F58D, providing a fix for the SMM log bypass vulnerability, and offering support for AMD Ryzen CPUs up to and including the 5000 series. I have linked the CPU compatibility list in the description. I for one found it hilarious to see the Ryzen 9 5950X there. The BIOS setup utility does provide control over the CPU frequency multiplier, allowing for overclocking. This is done in increments of 0.25 for the multiplier, 
or 25 MHz for the frequency. In terms of CPU voltage, the Gigabyte board offers some crude controls with only the ability to apply a voltage offset to the V-Core. Not as sophisticated as with the other boards, but good enough to play a bit with undervolting or to increase the voltage to be able to hold a certain CPU clock. For memory tuning, the BIOS will allow you to specify XMP profiles and for most users, me included, this is probably good enough. If you feel more adventurous however and want to manually set the various subtimings, then feel free to do just that. With an appropriate CPU, the BIOS utility provides control over the rebar settings. There are only two options available, auto and disable, so if your CPU supports it and the drop down menu is available, set it to auto. The BIOS utility also offers the options to balance thermals and noise levels by allowing you to choose from a few options for the fans. One of them will allow you to even specify a custom fan curve, which is always nice. Also a nice detail about the fan headers. The board is able to properly detect if the fan plugged in is a DC controlled 3 pin or a PVM controlled 4 pin when the auto option is selected. So, the GAA310TM-H is definitely a board that is targeting low budget builds. Those naked MOSFETs from the V-Core and TSOC rails will definitely benefit from the downdraft coolers that are shipped with the processors, so use those instead of going for a more expensive tower. You have a tight budget, this is a budget board, and the engineers who designed it rely on you to stay cheap and use the colors the CPU is shipped with. On the used market, I've seen this board going for anywhere between 20 to 40 USD, with 25 and 30 the more common prices. Now I'm okay with using a stock cooler to get the lower VRM temperatures, and I can ignore the increased noise levels that these would generate. However, there are better boards with better VRMs that can also use a more silent tower cooler and provide more peace of mind when it comes to its longevity. There are also even worse boards than this Gigabyte A320M-H, but we'll get to those when their turn comes. As for this one, well we're done. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked it. And